Hello, everyone. My name is Melinda Russell, and I'm the founder and CEO of the International Women's Motorsports Association. And I'm also the um, podcaster for Gate Racing Girls Rock podcast, which is um, all about women in motorsports. And we interview all kinds of women from little girls to grannies who've been racing forever. And we have such fun and we meet such great and interesting people. And today is no different. We're going to talk to Leah Bauer. Leah and I met through social media and we had a nice conversation yesterday. And so now today we're going to let you hear a little bit about her and her story and why she got interested in racing. So welcome to the show, Leah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this was pretty exciting. Um, social media, I have a love-hate relationship with. It takes a lot of my time, but it also allows me to meet really cool people like yourself pretty easily. I mean, you're in Michigan, I'm Wisconsin. It's not too far, but it's a lot easier just to jump on social media and, and get familiar with somebody. So I appreciate you having me. Oh, no problem. And you know, it'd be fun if we could meet up and have coffee, but it'd be a bit of a drive and we, right. can, <laughs> we can accomplish a lot more via zoom, which now, yes. you know, when I first started using zoom, nobody knew what it was and, yeah. you know, and now it's a household name. So, right. That was um, the thing, <laughs> how, how things have changed. I wish I had some stock in zoom. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Leah, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, um, anything that you're willing to share so people can know you a little bit better. Sure. Um, I actually own a graphic design business. That's um, part of my business is doing graphic design, but I also am the marketing manager for an alkaline bottled water company called Northern Chill. Um, so I do the graphic design, marketing, social media events, um, along with a few other people in the business. It's super fun. Um, we do a lot of really cool events with some really cool people. So um, I've kind of branched off and gotten away from my personal business a little bit just because this takes up a lot of time, but I still get to do exactly what I was doing um, and then some, so it's pretty fun for me to have that, um, fun job, as they say, you know, it's, it's not really a job when you like what you're doing. Um, and then I have a younger brother. He, uh, is the complete opposite of me. So a lot of people don't even know that I have a brother. He just not big into social media. He doesn't come to the races a whole lot. Um, so it's pretty funny when I say I have a brother and people are like, I never knew that. So little fun fact there, if you didn't know, um, my parents got divorced when I was younger and I just kind of gravitated more towards my dad working in the shop, working on cars. He's got a car collection. He's a world champion, snowmobile racer, motocross racer. So that always kind of was fun for me to be in the shop, learning and doing all the cool, fun things with dad. Um, and that's kind of just how I got started in it. Um, I started probably toward the end of high school in snowcross and I didn't, I don't know, for some reason, I just didn't like it. I don't know if I was probably just scared. Um, and then I did a couple ice oval races, which is actually this photo right here in the background. Um, that didn't really stick with me either. It was fun, but it wasn't, you know, really something that I got super into. And then it was time for college. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go to college, get my degree, focus on school, focus on my career. Um, and then once I graduated from college and now I'm dating myself, but I uh, started in cross country and that's where I really started love to love racing snowmobiles. Um, along with that, I also had been driving my dad's race car for quite some time. And um, I just did some track days with him. I just did a few um, co-driving events with him. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to go get my race license and race cars with my dad. So that's kind of, they both kind of came together at the same time, which is fun because I got the best of both worlds. I get a fun sport in the winter and I get a fun sport in the summer. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> I'm living the dream as they say. <laughs> it's, it sounds like it. And you know, it's funny that, um, isn't it funny how um, the girl in the family is gravitating towards the guy stuff? Yes, and brother absolutely. Is gravitating <laughs> towards whatever he likes to do, and it's not bad. Yes. So you know, it's there's nothing typical these days about like you look at a family. It used to be mom, dad, and two kids. You know, there's nothing typical these days about what a family looks like. And, right. you know, sometimes we just think automatically, oh, the boy's going to do this and the girl's going to do this. And so many times it's not that way at all. It's the opposite. Exactly. Yep, exactly. 
I, I love that girls feel like they can do anything. It doesn't matter, you know, right. what their gender is. And so that's, that's awesome, Leah. Well, and I'm definitely one of those people. If you tell me I can't, then I'm definitely going to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love that about you. That's awesome. So, um, so you're out of college and then you're starting to race. So for a lot of people, they're not going to know what cross country snowmobile racing is. Sure. So let's start with that. Tell okay. us where that is. What do you do? Is there a series? Where do you go to race? All those yeah. kinds of things. What kind of snowmobile it is. Give us all the details. Okay. So yeah, cross country is actually more of like an endurance race. Um, we race on lakes as well as terrain, but it's 100, 200, 300 mile races um, across country, hence the name. Um, so I race mostly in, Mich- in Minnesota and Wisconsin, um, and I was racing for a series called USXC, but now the Core Power Sports series actually bought USXC, so now it's called Core Power Sports. But yeah, we do, um, we have, like I said, the lake races, and they'll set up a course on the lake, and it'll be, you know, a 10, 15 mile course, and you'll just do laps to get to 100 or 200 miles. And then as far as the cross country, we race ditches, rivers, fields, we'll drop down onto a lake and then get back up into a field. So it's cross country and it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I don't think people really get the gist of it or understand how challenging it is, especially because it's tough in our series. We're not able to be televised. We don't get on, you know, any of the channels because you can't really film someone going 200 miles. Um, You know, you'll get a little glimpse here and there, but that's, what's tough for our series it's not like snowcross where you can go and watch them go around on the track. Nice. So we, I don't feel like we actually get the recognition that we should. It's really hard. I mean, we have guys that'll come out with their drones and do some really cool videos for us, which is great, but yeah, it'd be nice to have people know a little bit more about the series. Yeah, absolutely. Do, have you ever put a GoPro on the front of your snowmobile or does that not work? I have, I've done it before. Um, I just don't know that the the footage is that cool with the GoPro because you're going so fast. You can't really tell what's going on. Um, and a lot of times we race in 40, 50 below weather. So the GoPro freezes and dies after five miles in. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah. It's pretty tough. It sound it sounds like it. And I'm going to encourage people to Google it. And, um, yeah. and it's called core power, sports. Power, core power sports. Yep. Okay. So Google that people and find out more about this because I, that it wouldn't be my kind of sport. Cause I don't like to be cold. I go to Arizona <laughs> in the winter, but, um, you know, if you like snowmobiles and you like that kind of thing, I think this just sounds crazy and amazing at the same time. Yeah, it really is. And I always tell people too, it's a fairly easy sport to get into. I mean, you don't have the money. I understand that, but grab a friend's sled and go do one race. I mean, you can do yeah. one race just to see if you like it. You know, usually we'll do the full series, but if you just want to come in and say, Hey, I want to try this race. There's a sports stock class. You know, there's lower classes that you can get into that aren't so competitive and aren't so scary. And you can just ride at your own pace. And it's super fun. I mean, at this point in my life, in my career, yeah, I still want to win and I'm competitive, but some days it's like, man, I am, my body hurts. I'm just yeah. going to go out and have fun in this race. And my goal is to finish. And that's a huge accomplishment in these kind of races is just to finish. Oh, absolutely. And I was going to ask you about that, about how hard is that on your body? Because I, I don't snowmobile, but I have some friends in Utah that are huge snowmobilers. And I know that it is hard on your body. Mm-hmm. And then 200 miles, I can, I'm just picturing you're going up terrain, down across a lake, up through the trees and all this. And I'm thinking, man, this, this has got to be hard on your body. It is my everything hurts, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially the next day I wake up and it's like, we got to do this all over again. Well, you yeah. know, we do a Saturday and a Sunday race. So it's like, man, that, that next morning on Sunday, when I wake up and I have to do it all over again, it's like, why do I do this again? <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe I'll do the lower class today and yeah. just ride around. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just, you have to be physically in shape. I know people are always talking about athletes and people don't think of snowmobilers sometimes as athletes, but we are athletes and we mm-hmm. train. I mean, I train all season long. I start, I mean, I'm training, I'm in the gym all the time, but I start training really hard in like October, like to the grind, I'll be at the gym two hours every single day until it starts snowing when I can get on the sled and start riding for my training. But yeah, it's, it's very grueling. 
Wow, I get, I guess so. So Leah, what is, <clears throat> what is your favorite thing about doing that? Because it is hard on your body. And, and as we know, there's never a hundred percent that we love about anything, but what is it that really keeps you going back and, and gets you out there when it's really cold and your body hurts? Yeah, that's a tough question. I think it's just the passion of the sport itself. I mean, I'll go out and trail ride with my dad or my friends and that's fun, but racing is just at that next level, you know, and I'm very competitive. So even when I'm on the trails, I'm always looking around like, okay, I'm going to be first. I'm going to win. And it's just that drive to always do the best I can possibly do no matter what. And that's what keeps me going. It's like, get up, do it. I might not want to do it, but I know I have to do it. And it's just the pushing through. And finally, when it's over, it's like, wow, I'm so glad I did that. I'm so glad I pushed through even midway through the race. When I feel like I'm dying and my arms are going to fall off. It's like, nope, I have to do this. I have to keep pushing. I got to finish this race. And that's what keeps me going is that feel that and the adrenaline rush. It's just, it, you can't explain it. It's just crazy. So how do you know? So if you're going out through the woods and across lakes and it's 200 mile race, how do you know where to go? Do they mark the path somehow? Yeah. Yep. It's marked. So they'll have stakes that you go, you can't go out of the stake or you'll have to turn around and go back through, but yeah, they'll have course markers along the way. Okay. I figured they. it's like, pretty hard to get lost or like orange flags or something. <laughs> yeah. Yep. There's actually stakes with little orange um, diamonds on them. Okay. All right. I figured there had to be something because you wouldn't have any idea where to go. So, um, so yeah, that's all right. Green. So what kind of success have you had? I mean, as far you know, winning isn't always what, it, what is the definition of success. It doesn't mean that you bring the trophy home always. So what would you say that you're successful? What does that mean to you? I think just being in the industry, being a female in the industry, being, you know, considered maybe one of the top cross country female athletes. That's a success to me. I mean, the fact that I've been able to finish races, um, that's a huge success to me. I really think that, um, females in the um, primarily male driven industry is huge. And I just want to keep growing that. And I think the more females we can get into the industry, that's successful right there because it's not just you know, men anymore. Girls want to do this too. And we're just as good as the guys. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome to me. So how would, how could we help go about spreading the word and getting more girls? You know, obviously it's got to be somebody who lives in a state where there's snow mm -hmm. so you can practice and train. And so right. that eliminates, you know, a good portion of the country, but yet, there's a lot of those northern states like Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Utah, all those places that do have that. How, how do you get the word out? How can you get other girls interested? Um, I would say a lot of it going back to social media, you know, just kind of find somebody, you know, or even if you don't know, just reach out if you want to try it reach out to somebody, ask questions. I think that's the biggest thing for me when I first started racing is, yeah, you know how to ride a snowmobile, you know what a snowmobile is, but you don't know the first thing about how to get started in racing. So you just have to really ask questions. I mean, there are no stupid questions. No one's going to make you feel dumb for not knowing. Right. In this industry, I think a lot of people are willing to be very helpful because we want to grow the industry. We don't want this, you know, motorsports industry or the race industry to become less and less each year. We want to keep growing it each year and we want more people, especially females to get involved. So definitely um, just reach out and find somebody that knows what they're talking about and what they're doing and they'll be more than willing to help. So, okay. <clears throat> so let me ask you this on like on YouTube or anywhere, are there any, um, has there ever been any kind of a race, part of a race, anything where they've recorded it that people could go and kind of get a glimpse of what it's like, or because you're, you're going so far, it's hard to do that. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of the, um, snowmobile racers, a lot of the athletes, they have their own personal social media pages and they throw a lot of content on that. Um, I have some guys that film for me, so I've got some content of me racing. And then I know Co core power sports does have a YouTube page as well that they can, um, check out and, you know, just see everything okay. that it entails. So, okay. That's good because that's a good way for me to share some of that and 
try to help, you know, others get interested. Right. So, <clears throat> so you, you don't, you only do cross country in the snowmobile. Now, what about your car racing? What do you do there? Sure. So this is kind of a fun one for me because it's not your normal high speed, high octane power vehicle. These are like basically elevated go-karts. I mean, they're still cars, but uh, my dad and I race vintage and they don't go very fast. I think max is like 125, maybe oh, 130. Only um, 130. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they're super fun. So my dad races a 1959 Austin Healey and I race a 1962 MG Midget. And they're just our, we have 1275 CC engines. It's just a fun thing for my dad and I to do since he's getting older and the snowmobile is really hard on his body. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in a five point harness strapped in. There's not a lot to do to get hurt um, unless you don't know what you're doing, I guess. But yeah, we just, we like to go out and have fun. So I started co-driving with him and I was getting better and faster. And he eventually kicked me out of his car and said, get your own you're not going to beat my times in my own car. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got one and now it's super fun because we get to battle on the track together and our cars are so close to the same thing. And so similar in times that, you know, we're constantly on the track back and forth and I get to watch his lines and then he'll follow me. And it's super fun. It's, it's definitely more of a hobby for us than anything because we just like to have fun when we do it. So is there a series there that you race with? Yep. So the series is VSCDA, Vintage Sports Car Drivers Association of America. Um, it's def it's been around for a long time, but it's really fun because we basically know everyone and everybody's friends and we'll battle on the track. But then when racing's done, we're all at each other's pits, hanging out, having a good time, you know, eating food, just going over what happened in the day, laughing, telling jokes. I mean, it's it's so much fun. I look forward to race weekends more than anything in the summer. And so where do you race those? Are those mostly in Wisconsin or where? Um, it's mostly in the Midwest. So we race at BIR in, in Minnesota. We race at Road America in Wisconsin. There's two tracks, uh, Grattan and Gingerman in Michigan, Blackhawk in Illinois. So we get to travel a little bit. It's fun to go to the different tracks, but it's definitely just in the Midwest for now. So, so it's more of a road, you do like a road course. Road it's not, course. Yeah, it's not sort of, yep. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ginger Man is close. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah. And Grattan's yeah. not that far um, yeah. away. And then, of course, Blackhawks in Illinois, a couple hours away, too. So, right. yeah. so not far, but um, I'd love to come and see that. That's one kind yeah. of thing I haven't seen yet. So that yeah, sounds like sure. so much fun. Yeah, so Ginger Man is actually where I got my race license. Oh, is it? I took okay. driving school there and got my license at Ginger Man. It's a fun track. It is. It yeah. is. And it's out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they usually <laughs> kind of are just with the noise ordinance and yeah. stuff. It's hard to have them right in town by oh, yeah. people. But... That makes sense. Yeah. yeah for sure. So um, yeah, I just lost my train of thought what I was going to ask you about. So when you're racing that against your dad, do you ever does it push you to go faster and beat him? Or sometimes are you like, yeah, I, I'm gonna kind of hold back for my dad. Oh no, there's no holding back. <laughs> I'm going to beat him. <laughs> okay. Have you but ever wrecked each other? No, we, our racing is no, no rubbing is racing. We don't touch. I mean, they're okay. all vintage collector cars essentially. So nobody ever wants to get into it. You know, if it's getting close, somebody will pull the line because you don't want to smash into $130,000 vehicle. So exactly. That's um, kind of what I was thinking. That's why I like it too, because it's not, I mean, it's aggressive, but it's not aggressive to the point where someone's going to take you out yeah. and crash you just to get the spot. So I really like that aspect of it, but yeah, I'm, we're both really competitive. So we, there's a lot of banter that goes on and it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat you. No, I'm going to beat you. And then pretty soon he's over in the pits pretending to take stuff off my car and put it in his and everybody <laughs> just, I mean, it's super fun. Everyone just laughs, but we like to have a good time. So are there other women that race the vintage cars or are you kind of a minority? I'm sure. Um, there are, there are a handful of other women that race and it's nice because we're super competitive on track, but I mean, we're the greatest of friends off track. So it's, it's really nice to have the support and have actual friends in the industry versus just wanting to beat everybody and you don't really talk or get along. It's, it's a lot like a big family. 
you know, racing typically is, um, mm -hmm. even if you're competitive, it is like a big family, but I liked hearing what you said about, you're not going to take somebody out. You know, my, my granddaughters both race and they're 17 and Maddie just turned 16 and Maddie's really gotten into racing this year. She's driving a street stock. Oh, and awesome. one of the, she was, she was going to win her heat race till some older guy probably could be her grandpa spun her out on purpose. Oh no. And I'm glad I wasn't there because Mama gets a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, was, and you know, I probably would have said something on social media, like you have to spin out a 16 year old in order to win. You know what I mean? But yeah. I, I wasn't there. And so luckily I didn't embarrass my daughter or my granddaughter, but um, I love hearing that it's, it's really more of a relaxed, if you will, Right. Type of racing in that you don't have to worry that that kind of thing is going to go on. I mean, if you watch social media or the news, there's there's some horrendous mm -hmm. things happening in the pits and on the track when people get upset. And, and right. you know, they're not they're not going for millions of dollars. Right. It's not only it not only takes the fun out of it, but it's dangerous. I mean, why would you put yourself in that position? It's just not my style. I mean. I would way rather have fun and have friends and love what I'm doing and make a little less money than try to go for the million dollars and take everybody out and create all these en enemies and drama. It's just, it just takes the fun out of it. And it would make me not want to race if that were the case. So I'm really glad that this is a little more relaxed. I mean, yeah, it's competitive and I still get a little amped up, but it's not like if I lose the race, I'm going to go and cry and lock myself in my house for three weeks. Cause I just lost a million dollars. It's, it's the fun aspect for me is yeah. what makes the thing. Yeah. And it sounds to me like the snowmobile racing is really more of your, your really hardcore. I want to win. And that yeah. vintage is more, Hey, we're having a great time and it's a fun right. weekend. And, and mm -hmm. so you've kind of got the best of both worlds there, you know, and like right. you said, you get to race winter and summer you know, and probably doesn't really matter the weather if even if it's snowing, you're probably still racing, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. Whereas if it's raining in the summer, you know, everybody's packing up and going home. And so that's yeah. the frustrating part about that. Right. Well, we actually do run in the rain. We've got rain tires, but yeah, oh. it makes it a little more sketchy and not as fun because my dad and I have um, convertibles. So oh. we get soaked. <laughs> That would be interesting. So unless it's lightning or there's a tornado, we usually run in the rain. Um, and then there's the rain line. So then I have to kind of think, okay, I'm not on the race line. I have to jump over onto the rain line so that I make sure I'm sticking to the course and not sliding all over the place. Oh yeah. Well, that's okay. a fun challenge. And it seems like no matter what, whenever I show up, it starts raining. So everyone blames me for the rain all the time. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But well, I don't think you're, you're to blame because it's happening all over. It's it is, not yeah, that's not, it's summer racing. in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. So Leah, what, like when you're, when you're my age, I'm 65, when you're my age and you look back, how would you like to have impacted both the snowmobile racing and the car racing or just motorsports for women in general? How would you like to leave a legacy, I guess? Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I think for me, I just want to have the impact on, I mean, not only women, but men as well in the industry. I just want to be someone that people can look up to, that people feel comfortable asking questions about. Um, I really want to somehow stay connected, whether it be, you know, helping out as a race director or helping out as a race instructor. Um, and I just want to have that connections still, even at an older age, if I can't race, I would love to still be in the industry helping out, um, doing anything I can to keep racing a thing. Yeah. And with your experience and knowledge of social media, you're probably one of the better ones to promote that, you know, from here on out, because you're mm -hmm. going to stay up on what's the newest, you know, social media platform and what to do and what to say. And so, um, right. you're going to be a good advocate. For, mm -hmm. for those sports for sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So what's your, is there anything in the, in motorsports that you'd like to do, even if it's just wild and crazy dream, do you have any dreams of doing something other than what you're doing now? 
Um, well, I used to work for Nitro Circus a while back, which is an action sports company. Um, Travis Pastrana, all the guys, they do these crazy flips and just anything and everything you can imagine. And it's just, it's always been just mind blowing to me. So ever since like back in the day, I met Travis when I was probably 14 at a supercross race in Minneapolis. And ever since I learned about the Nitro Circus and I've seen them doing things, I've always wanted to backflip my snowmobile. And <laughs> oh, I was <laughs> legit going to do it probably five years ago, but now I've had a few injuries and I'm a little scared and I don't like surgery and I don't like hospitals. So I think I probably won't do it unless, oh, I probably shouldn't even say this. Hopefully no. my mom's not watching. <laughs> but unless I get some crazy offer or, you know, could find a foam pit and get comfortable. I've always wanted to do that, but I just don't think that at this point. So, happen. so if you wanted to flip your snowmobile, I'm guessing you don't weigh very much from the size of you and a snowmobile is pretty heavy. Yes. So do you have to like go up a hill and try to go backwards or how would you? Try um, to it would be, a, yeah, it'd be off of a ramp actually. Okay. And you basically just go off and you just pull as hard as you can to get the thing to flip around. So yeah, I I, it's been done. I just, yeah, I don't know. I, as a mom and a grandma, I'm going to say, yeah, probably not. I Let's know. I have to watch it. what I, I have to watch what I say because I think both of my parents follow me pretty closely on social media. I'm sure so they, do. they would not be impressed. <laughs> no, I think, I think you're, you've got the sense that it'd really be cool to do it, but I'm probably not going to try that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. At this point, it's probably too far gone and I'm okay. Not getting hurt. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So Leah, um, what, what else have I not asked you about that you would like to share about yourself, your racing, your job, anything that maybe I haven't touched on? That's a great question. Um, I don't really know. I think basically just for me, getting the word out about racing, um, getting the word out about bringing more females into the industry, um, I also know I kind of briefly touched on the money situation. It's kind of an expensive sport to get into. However, that's why we have sponsors. So, um, I always be reaching out and looking for sponsors, whether it's monetary or clothing or parts or whatever it might be. I've been super blessed in the past, um, with sponsors. I've reached out to sponsors. I've had sponsors reach out to me. Um, and it's really finding that balance of what, you can do for me and what I can do for you, because I know I really, uh, really appreciate sponsors. And so I try to go above and beyond. I try to do whatever I can to show my support and appreciation for them. So I'm constantly trying to post on social media and say, Hey, this person, you know, did this, or this company did this, go follow them, go buy their stuff. Here's a coupon code. I really try to promote them because they're the reason I'm able to do this. I mean, without sponsors, there's no way I could afford both car and snowmobile racing. So. Right. So do you have anybody that you want to mention as far as your sponsors? Yeah, I have a lot of people that I really want to thank my parents, especially. Um, they have been huge. I mean, I know they don't like my dad is okay, but my mom, I know doesn't really like me racing just because she's scared and doesn't want to see me get hurt. But I, they're my biggest fans and I appreciate them. My dad owns a trucking company. Um, so he's been helping me out with, the sponsorship per se. Um, but then, uh, fly racing, Polaris, CNA skis, um, Northern chill racer, coffee company, surface sunscreen. Um, I haven't been on the podium for a while, so I know That's I'm okay. I don't have the list down yet. You know yeah. what, what we'll do is if you send me the list, we'll put it in the show notes. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Woody's traction. Yeah. There's just, I've had so much support from people and I just honestly cannot thank them enough. It's just, it's crazy. And it, it's really helpful because it makes you want to keep racing. It makes you want to stay in the industry and bring more people into the industry too. So like I said, if you're, if you're worried about the money thing, just start reaching out to people, get your resume in order. If you've never raced before, you know, just reach out anyways, fill out those applications and more than likely somebody will be willing to help you out. So, yeah, there's usually somebody there. If you, if you do your work and your due diligence, you're going to find somebody who has a passion for racing, mm -hmm. loves seeing a woman doing something that typically guys do. And so that right. makes their products, you know, I'm supporting a woman that does this and that's kind of cool. So right. 
Yeah. So you just, you, you can't sit back and wait for them to come to you because that's not going to happen. You have to, I mean, once you get out there and they get your name out there, that's different, but to get right. started, you've got to do the work or it's not going to mm-hmm. happen. And exactly. And that's, that's true in life, isn't it? You have to do the work in order to make your dreams come true. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Leah, it's really been a pleasure to talk with you oh, and you. to learn more about you and to, to, I, I would love to come and watch one of those races, but not if it's 40 below. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start I'll you do. with the cars. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's do that. Cause Perfect. Uh, yeah. Like, when you come to Michigan, that's a little closer and, and awesome. start with the cars. How's that? Yeah, that absolutely. Idea? That works. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Well, Leah, again, thank you so much for taking time to be on the podcast and um, love talking to you. And hopefully this will get the word out more about not only the vintage cars racing, but also about the cross country snowmobile. I'm, I'm excited to be able to share that for you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's been great chatting with you as well. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.